In the vast library of wrestling tunes, some themes stand the test of time, while others make us somewhat embarrassed to be fans. But come on, tell me you don't have a soft spot for biscuits and gravy! Now personally, I like all music, and if loving these particular songs is so wrong, well then, I don't want to be right. Because I'm Kevin Callis, this is Wrestling Behind the Themes, and here's our list of entrance themes you're afraid to admit you totally love. If anything helped fuel the term X-Pac Heat, it had to be this awkward entrance music for The X Factor back in 2001. I guess someone honestly said, hey, let's let Uncle Cracker do a song for a group of our guys. And absolutely no one punched that person in the face until their hand broke. Starting out like a boy band tune before transitioning into a strange mix of hip hop and early 90s club classics. The only factor this song had was ensuring this faction was a joke from the very get go. Jillian Hall had a dream of becoming the greatest pop recording artist on the planet, but there was one gigantic mole of a problem. <laughs> She couldn't hold a tune in a bucket, but unfortunately, that didn't stop her from trying to make her terrible voice heard. Yeah! Hall's entrance music, entitled Sliced Bread, is a synthy pop number that tells the audience how all the boys chase after her because, you know, she's a loaf of bread. Yeah! Despite being the worst singer in wrestling history, I appreciate her efforts and always enjoy the holidays a little more whenever a jingle with Jillian begins to play. Towards the end of their demise, WCW was a steaming pile of hot garbage in a dumpster fire floating down a river. Put everybody in here to take a good long look at this crap I'm in. Creatively speaking, it was a hodgepodge of gimmick matches, gimmick wrestlers that left their fan base utterly pissed and reaching for the remote to change the channel for good. However, a hidden gem, so to speak, was found in a trio of young talent consisting of Shane Helms, Shannon Moore, and Evan Courageous, who would become known affectionately by the name Three Count. What's up with that? A heel millennial boy band buffer and badder than the Backstreet Boys. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry, has had many different incarnations over the years. From smiley Olympian Mark Henry, to Nation of Domination Mark Henry, WWECW Mark Henry, and Salmon Jacket Mark Henry. But the gimmick that he is most famously linked to is Sexual Chocolate. The Sexual Chocolate character would run its course, prematurely that is, yeah! thanks to a couple of cringe-worthy moments that pushed the envelope even for the Attitude Era. Ew! However, this soulful entrance theme inspired by Barry White, AKA the Walrus of Love, how about that for a nickname, was so bad that it was almost good. You can't help but wonder what might have been for the realest guy in the room, Enzo Amore. The smack talker Skywalker was hired by the WWE in 2012 and immediately paired with the seven foot tall Big Cass. Now these two certified G's and bona fide studs rose through the NXT ranks and then the next thing you know, bada bing, they made a memorable post WrestleMania 32 main roster debut. But unfortunately for Enzo, he quickly became a social outcast in the locker room and developed a ton of heat by, well, by being his obnoxious self. How you doing? Eventually, he was released and is now banned from the WWE after a PR stunt gone bad where, bada boom, Enzo got thrown out of the room. However, how could you ever forget about his hype, hip-hop performance of their theme, Soft is a Sin? The Italian intro riff pairs perfectly with the techno beats to make this one hot and saucy song. During the whole Your Job Is Your Gimmick era during the 90s, former Demolition member Smash was repackaged into the Repo Man, a sneaky Zorro mask wearing creep that went around repossessing people's cars, homes, or whatever they couldn't afford to make payments on. However, if you didn't fall in love with the overall goofiness of the character, then something's really wrong with you. Why? Here's why. For all you boomers out there, the Repo Man actually looked and acted a whole lot like the Riddler from the 1960s Batman TV show. And what put the Repo Man over the top was his OG Shattering Glass entrance theme song called Repossessor Blues. Okay, bro. That funky like a monkey bass line has no business being that catchy. So we definitely have to give it an up. Right, Simon? I love Repo Man. I will always love Repo Man. Repo Man is arguably the greatest worst gimmick of all time. And just long live Repo Man. 
Known for his salsa-like dance moves and crazy conga lines, No Way Jose was a muy bueno bubbly babyface. But much like similar gimmicks that preceded him, like Fandango and Adam Rose, once you are pegged as a fun-loving dancing guy, it's really tough to shake that label. I mean, I kind of feel bad for the guy for not working out on the main WWE roster. But let's face it, the dude wasn't exactly going to be the next Juan Cena. And although his character appealed to the vast WWE universe, Jose wasn't as over as his fan-friendly entrance music. With its incredible simplicity, the hook in this theme song has a thumping Latin beat that you know you can't stop listening to over and over again. If you would have told me at the beginning of 2022 that daddy ass Billy Gunn would be the most over wrestler of the year, I would have kicked you straight in the jimmy. Now, even though the creative wasn't always perfect, but let's forget about Rockabilly for a sec. Gunn's 1999 solo push remains the catalyst for his main event run due to the E's insistence on calling him Mr. Ass all the time, including his Ass Man theme song. As if emphasizing his rear end constantly was a good thing, it was the over-the-top lyrics outlining the many ways in which Gunn took his love for the gluteus to the max. Granted, the song also mentioned how he occasionally kicked an ass or two, but by that point, fans were too busy scratching their heads instead of shaking their booties enough to care. One of the more underappreciated occupational gimmicks and entrance themes belonged to Rick the Model Martel. With his striking good looks, slicked back hair, and chiseled physique, the arrogant Canadian looked as if he had just stepped right off of a Paris runway and into the World Wrestling Federation. And when you heard the gentle strumming of harp strings, followed by a sultry saxophone in his model theme song, the essence of Martel's manliness was connected, primed, and ready to titillate all the juices of your guilty pleasures to the max. Yeah! Jacques Rougeau is a fabulous Canadian legend. Not from a musical perspective, mind you, because he's nowhere near the level of a crooner like Robert Goulet or a teen heartthrob like the Beebs. Instead, the former WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion bestowed upon us one of the single greatest and cheesiest theme songs of all time when he played the role of the Mountie, an officer in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Rougeau was a vile, corrupt, cattle prod, wielding bad guy singing his own personalized, obnoxious entrance. I'm the Mountie, featured the Quebecer bellowing behind the mic, boasting about how handsome, brave, and strong he was. Now here's a fun fact for you. The gimmick worked so well that it became the subject of litigation in the Great White North and ultimately led to Jacques being banned from performing as the Mountie in Canada, eh? Ah, take off you hoser. The Black Scorpion is a WrestleCrap Hall of Fame gimmick where an unknown mystic claiming to be from the man called Sting's past would taunt the stinger from the spooky shadows. Speaking in a voice distorted just enough to keep fans guessing his true identity, while good old JR spits some boo sheets about Scorpy possibly being the ultimate warrior, Sting, remember California, 1986. Uh. Turns out WCW couldn't sign Warrior and and they really had no clue who to put under the mask, so the angle essentially became a cluster of a parts unknown party. WCW Booker and Emmy Award winning voice of the Black Scorpion, Ole Anderson knew only one thing could save this storyline, and no, it wasn't a freaking spaceship or this not so scary Turner Music Production theme song, but rather the Nature Boy Ric Flair and his big old bird beak as the big reveal. Woo! It's highly unlikely that Val Venus's occupation of being a porn star would be acceptable in today's wrestling landscape. However, at the time, the WWE was young, dumb, and full of attitude. And an adult character like this fit the era perfectly. Nicknamed the Big Valboski, Venus would make his entrance to the soft core sounds of a seductive saxophone before tearing off his towel and gyrating his hips as the ladies screamed into light. And although he was never going to rise to the top of the card or main event WrestleMania with a questionable and controversial gimmick like this, he reached the climax point of his career not once, but twice when he became Intercontinental Champion. 
clearly the Honky Tonk Man is not only the greatest intercontinental champion of all time, but he is also the greatest music-influenced gimmick of all time. With long sideburns and slick back hair, Honky shook up the WWE in the 1980s and was obviously inspired by none other than Elvis Presley. Uh. The Honky Tonk Man walked, talked, danced, and dressed like the king of rock and roll. Despite being cool, cocky, and bad, Honky was too easy to boo because his Elvis impersonation was ain't nothing but a hound dog. First off, shout out to fellow YouTuber Wrestling Bios and his healthy obsession with Das Wonder Kid, Alex Wright. They both definitely got the jam and will certainly appreciate that Alex's unused theme song has made this list. Oh, big bratwurst. A Europop Jamie Jam featuring Wright rapping lyrics of love like... Censorship is the most obnoxious entrance theme of all time. Yep. Sounding like a cross between an annoying car alarm and something you'd probably hear in a fallout shelter. That's like an alarm clock. Woo -woo! However, this was a great fit for the right to censor put together as a parody of the parent television council who were protesting WWE programming's level of violence and questionable content, this faction featured formerly risque characters who had ultimately seen the light I have exercised the demons and changed their inappropriate ways. Played at an eardrum-busting volume, this theme made everyone hate the RTC, but even though a funky bass line and some drums were added to the track, it was still pretty gosh darn painful. Try not to two-step to this fiddle-friendly theme for country music fan turned WWE Hall of Fame wrestler James Morris, better known by the moniker Hillbilly Jim. Jim was a simple-minded, shaggy-bearded Appalachian hillbilly who could carry a tune for sure, and that tune was a down-home folksy barn dance of a song called Don't Go Messin' With A Country Boy. For the perennial good guy that hillbilly was, it's the perfect tune, even if it does happen to be one of the cheesiest things from the wrestling album. Kudos to the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, and Bruce Pritchard for getting Sensational Sherry into the recording studio to do this song because it's so bad that it's actually good. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Hall of Fame career of Sherry Martell, you surely recognize her unmistakable nicotine-laden voice, but Martell brought so much more to the table. She was skilled and accomplished inside the squared circle and a force to be reckoned with when managing outside of it. And even though it isn't the version that gets played for HBK anymore, Sherry's stirring rendition of Shawn Michaels' entrance theme, Sexy Boy, helped strap a rocket to the Heartbreak Kid's back and catapulted him into the stratosphere. Somewhat remembered for his smooth 1980 yak rot hit Steal Away, singer-guitarist journeyman Robbie Dupree, no relation to Max or Maxine, yeah, wasn't exactly the type of music act you'd peg for the world of sports entertainment in the late 1980s. But as a favor to his buddy and the real, real American Rick Derringer, Bruh. Dupree performed the wussiest wrestling tune ever, Girls in Cars. Now somehow a cheese dick song about one man's love-hate relationship relationship with, well, with girls and cars, became the most awkward theme music for the white meat, rah-rah, baby-faced tag team of Rick Martel and Tito Santana, known as Strike Force. How this adult contemporary composition wound up accompanying the Strike Farce to the ring is beyond me. Terry Taylor was a young babyface the chicks loved. <laughs> A star on the way up in the territories like the UWF, Taylor was a nine-year vet when he was signed by the WWF to play the Red Rooster, strutting and crowing his way to the ring like the cock of the walk. Any chance at legitimate stardom Taylor had envisioned vanished when the Fed planted this weird gimmick on him. And the WWF audience didn't exactly know how to react to a grown man who thought he was a yardbird because fans refused to rock out to this upbeat dance track that was truly for the birds. When most normal folk hear the words biscuits and gravy, it conjures up images of flaky, buttery biscuits topped with a decadent, sausage-studded, creamy sauce. But not me. I picture the comedy pairing of Jesse, aka Ray Gordy, the son of fabulous freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy, and Festus, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sex Ferguson. I mean, Luke Gallows. 
Anywho, this dim-witted duo may not have set the wrestling world on fire, isn't that right, Imposter Kane? But their horrifyingly amazing entrance theme will go down in history as one of former WWE music producer Jim Johnston's most ridiculous compositions ever. Biscuits and Gravy had no business being as catchy as it was, and this tune definitely belongs in the Hillbilly Hall of Fame because it made you and me a man. For all the legendary entrance theme music that the mouth of the South Jimmy Hart has created during his wrestling career, his tremendous body of work was almost erased entirely because of this stinker of a song for the WCW tag team of Buff Bagwell and Scotty Riggs, aka the American Males. Now, I don't think the fans were necessarily left in a state of confusion as to what the name of this ambiguously gay duo was, because throughout its two and a half brutal minutes of torture, the words American Males are repeated about 4 million times. This track is your usual WCW butt rock, only this time it's dressed up with some lame techno sound effects vocals. and awkward AF lyrics. Bastion Booger's theme music is about as appealing as his ring gear, and frankly, it's almost impossible to even call it music. <laughs> The audio used was merely discordant sounds and inharmonious recordings of what sounds like the Boogerman wheezing while wearing a CPAP mask. Appropriate for his gimmick? Sure, but still. Booger was basically an unsavory slob who enjoyed gorging on food and wrestling in a tight, unattractive singlet designed not to accentuate his positives, but instead emphasize his most unappealing features and really left fans with a bad taste in their mouth. It really hurts my heart to think back on Bret Hart in WCW. The hitman had dominated the WWE in the 1990s, but soon became just another well-paid wrestler that WCW had no clue what to do with, debuting a month removed from the infamous Montreal Screwjob at Starcade 97. The hitman wasn't booked to actually wrestle, but instead serve as the guest referee for a match between Larry Zbysko and Eric Bischoff. Heartbreaking stuff here, and musically speaking, WCW and Jimmy Hart also came up with a bizarro world Peter Frampton sounding piece of entrance music called Hitman in the House. Obviously, WCW couldn't legally use Brett's heart attack WWE theme, but in true fashion, they picked a song that was not the best theme there is, not the best theme there was, and definitely not the best theme there ever will be. I know some of you youngsters are probably thinking to yourself, what in the blue hell is this? Well, it's Bertha Faye. Bruh. The highly decorated Rhonda Singh, who was brought into the WWF clown show to serve as a hefty heel challenger for Alundra Blaze. Now, Big Bertha was slapped with your basic run-of-the-mill trailer park trash gimmick, dressed up like a female version of Dusty Rhodes, and paired with a greasy-haired run-of-a-manager, Dr. Harvey Whippleman. These two, kayfabe, fell madly in love with each other. But in reality, they didn't get along at all. However, Harvey's heart would still go on to reciprocate his feelings by writing this love song for Heavy B called Sweet Lovin' Arms. WWE's cruiserweight cowboy Jimmy Wang Yang has probably the most cliche country music theme song. But first a question I'm sure you're asking yourself right now. Who in their ever-loving minds thought an Asian cowboy pretending to be from the Lone Star State of Texas would be a big hit in the WWE around 2006? Nope, nope, nope. Now the sad thing is that Jimmy could actually go and wrestle, having been featured in WCW, TNA, and ROH before getting saddled with this gimmick. Saddled? Get it? Seriously though, this tune would be a much better fit for Cowboy Brock Lesnar, wouldn't it? You know you love this entrance theme, which has helped both Ernest the Cat Miller and even God get jiggy with it. But the funky cheesiness of Somebody Call My Mama is most synonymous with the Funkasaurus Brodus Clay. A modern day junkyard dog, if you will, Clay would cut a rug before and after every match, often inviting children to boogie down with them and the Funkadactyls inside the squared circle. But eventually the music would run out and the once vibrant and friendly Brodus stopped shaking his groove thing upon his 2014 release. 
Rob Conway seemingly had it all. He was a well-regarded hand inside the squared circle, had a chiseled, out-of-granite physique, and had the tried and true gimmick of being a narcissistic heel in love with himself. But then the music began. Sadly, Conway's theme was so out of left field for a wrestling entrance that it hurt his overall presentation, which is the exact opposite of what it should do. Just Look At Me sounds like a poor man's version of a song meant for a Disney or Pixar movie. And despite an initial mini push from the company, the Conway was not the right way, and his career took the wrong way. But at least we can look back on this tune and smile. William Regal has had several different monikers throughout his career, but the majority of these personas portrayed the gentleman villain as a snooty, blue-blooded Englishman. However, before he was king of the ring and displayed regality, his lordship was a real man's man, complete with the goofiest, guilty pleasure entrance theme of all time, introduced via a series of pre-produced vignettes that showed off what a macho son of a bitch he was by bulldozing large piles of dirt into somewhat smaller piles of dirt chopping wood, and squeezing his own hand-picked oranges to make the manliest concoction of juice you've ever tasted. And the real crown jewel of this gimmick was his Monty Python lumberjack-esque song that sounded like it was a total rib, but has somehow become a cult classic over the years. So what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree with our list? Well, either way, just be sure to leave a comment down below and give this video a massive thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow and reach new people. And I'll see you next time right here on Wrestling Behind the Themes.